guys welcome back to my channel so I'm here to play again or we're here to play again um, with our beautiful beach huts um, principles so I thought what we do today is just do or what we do in this video is um, just make a couple of sort of journaly pull out bits so oops excuse me as soon as I drag things in everything comes off you know flying off the pile so um, I apologize for that so I'm just deciding I think I'm going to use this as the sort of cover obviously we are not making a you know full-blown journal here we are making a very simplistic you know super easy um, version of a journal let's just say so I'm just going to take this sheet and just literally fold that in and obviously we want this to go with our folio you know it's not going to probably fit in our folio if I'm truthful because our folio is you know really getting very fat now um but we want it to be at least able to be tied up with our folio so you want to make it you know a similar size basically so I'm just folding these bits in here like that and then fold that in like that to just make a couple of little flap type bits in there and then what I'm going to do I'm going to cut my um, oh, not folio my journal down so I'm going to cut it down just a little bit sort of about here again just to ensure that it's going to sit neatly into my folio or you know with alongside my folio so I'm going to just stitch it uh, stick in my little foldy flat pieces and again if you've got your sewing machine handy you could stitch these you know and they would look really nice and again we just stick those down like that okay okay and then we're just going to press that down hopefully they're sticking down okay right So this is the basis of our journal. Now what I'm going to do, I think, is just clip this for a moment, just whilst we play around with making some pages for inside. So I've just brought along a variety of just some coffee dyed paper, which we can just make some inside pages from. So I'm just having a look. So let me just fold some down. I've got some lined paper, paper here, which I mean, obviously the lines here would be running down that way, but actually I could probably have them this way to be fair. So just fold that one in. Then I've got some of this, um, oh gosh, what, what do you call this? why have I just drawn a complete blank on this I have no idea ledger sort of ledger paper I don't know what happened there my mind just went completely blank so I'm just going to cut this down here rather than waste like the whole lot because this is still in its you know double page effect you know from um, you know being in its original binding so I'm just wondering whether no. Right, so I'll have to fold that in anyway, so that's fine. That's those, and then I've also got this. This is some vintage documents from 1973. So again, just taking this in. So it's, you know, a vintage document, but I've coffee dyed it. And this again is more of that vintage document so again just going to bring that in like that 
Okay, so I'm going to trim my bits down. my scraps out of the way as I do them but they're not really scraps because I mean actually they're pretty decent sized pieces aren't they but we'll just move them out of the way okay taking this one in a bit because I think it was a bit on the wide side it might still be actually yeah, I think it is. So I'll just take that in slightly more. So I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you're all staying healthy, um, you know, and that you're not feeling too anxious about the situation. Of course, you know, it's hard not to be, isn't it? But, um, you know, I hope that everyone's just staying indoors, staying safe. Hopefully just distracting yourself with, um, you know, making some pretty projects here, you know, together. And, um, yeah, hopefully that's taking your mind off everything that's going on that's not so brilliant. There we go. And then this one here. Right, so that's my pages there to form that little journal. So I'm just going to trim a couple down height-wise. So these are those vintage documents. And is that one document? No, nope, that one's plain, but this is the vintage document. So this one here is pretty easy. I can just trim it in here. Don't know whether that's quite small enough, but hopefully it is. Yep, so that's a good size. So now for this one, I'm just going to fold it in the other way so, so that I can keep an eye on where I'm cutting as I bring this down. So I'm going to take in a bit from either side. I might have to go in further, but we'll see. I might have to go in just slightly more, so it's just going to cut into that circle, I think, slightly, but hopefully not too much. There we go, like that. And I want to have that one folded in that way, so as I've got some text in inwards and some out, if that makes sense. And then I'm just going to trim down this one here, which was just the plain copy paper. Hopefully this is now stuck together. Let me just pop my pop my bulldog clips out of the way. Oops. Okay. Right. So obviously that's the basis of my journal there. I'm just going to, you know, randomly just put my pieces of paper in throughout here. Okay, and then they will sit in there like that. So as you can see, they're overhanging slightly, so I need to just take a little bit more off of the edge. So I'm just going to attempt to do that. Probably will make a hideous job of this. So I probably would recommend you separating these out and doing them <laughs> more like individual pages, but you know, because I'm doing a video, obviously I don't want to just be here all day kind of doing things like that. So. There we go, it didn't come out too bad. So then what you can do is obviously, you know, you could stitch this in the conventional way, you could run it through your sewing machine, you know, how, <coughs> however that you choose. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm just going to clip it in place. Like that, like that. And then I'm going to take my really big needle 
which now, of course, I'm now not going to be able to find. Hold on. I'm trying to be very good and keep my needles in some sort of organisation. I mean, obviously, I have got needles other than just these, but I'm really poor for keeping my needles in any sort of order. So I'm trying my best to keep these a bit better. Oh, that one's not my, not my really big one. My really big one is there. Come on. Okay, so I've got my really big one now because I thought it would be quite nice to bind that with the baker's twine to match the folio. Now, am I going to get that through there? This baker's twine seems slightly thicker than, you know, baker's twine that I've used previously. So I might not be able to get this through here without using one of those needle threader things, which I don't have, of course, at my desk. So, you know, as usual, you think you're just really organised and then no. You then try and do something that's slightly off the beaten track. No, you see, I'm just now, just now loosening that thread completely. So, right, hold on guys, again. Okay, finally, I have now threaded my um, little thingamajiggly <laughs> thread. Thread, I don't know why I couldn't remember the word for that. So I'm just checking that I've got you know, sufficient pages and whether I would prefer to add a few more. So, just have a look. It would be quite a skinny page. I could have a small page. Mm. Uh, let's just have a look. I could just use one of these envelopes, to be fair, as a page. So, I'm just going to cut that down. as well. They're quite nice because they've got the different colour on the inside and obviously they have been coffee dyed so they're quite a nice different thing to have in the in the journal. So that's another little page there. Just seeing whether I've got anything else on the desk that would lend itself to being used. I have got some more of that vintage document, so I'm just going to pull that in and use a little bit more of that. So, just so I've got a few more pages, basically. So, we're just going to trim this one down here. Again, just need to trim that down. Oops, made a hideous job again of cutting that. Okay. Okay, so I've got a couple more pages now, which is is good. So let me just trim that down slightly more. And then I will just slot those in. I quite like that um, envelope one actually because it goes really nicely with that kit. So I've got another envelope here. I might just do another one of those. Just trim that down there. And I might put this one in the other way it's got the blue it's like a blue grey inside that envelope but so it's got that you know facing outwards right okay so that's my sort of mishmash of pages so we're just going to pop them in like that oh, I've got a really long one in the middle but that's okay I'll trim that down in a moment so let's just just get 
it sort of bound first. So again, I'll just do three, three holes. Right, so yeah, this um, is really pretty thick baker's twine, to be honest. So, you know, I mean, again, if you haven't got baker's twine, oh gosh, I can't even get it through the hole, look. And that hole, I'm pretty sure, is bigger than the holes that I've done either end. So, um, oh my gosh, right. Going to be struggling to pull it through now. Right, okay but I will be struggling on the other ones, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, if you haven't got baker's twine, I mean, just use whatever you have to hand. I'm just using the baker's twine, you know, I've used the baker's twine to obviously, um, as a closure for the folio, and I just thought, oh, that would be kind of a nice way to bind the journal. It just ties it in. Oh my gosh, this is... Uh, not not good and I'm not making a good job of this at all so again this is another you know how not to craft so oh my gosh I'm going to have to make the hole a bit bigger for the um the other end so let me just make that one a bit bigger and then definitely make this one a bit bigger so as I'm not hopefully having that same problem okay it's so big now look the needles just literally flopping around and dropping out so okay right this is just not a good demonstration obviously <laughs> obviously but never mind It's not helping because this baker's twine is so very thick, look. It's just all getting quite twisted up and, um, yeah, it maybe wasn't the best thing to use, to be fair, to actually bind this. So I'm just going to, I think, go back through the centre. Might have to make that bigger because... Um, Obviously, it's got that great big chunky binding already. It now doesn't want to take even more through. So there we go. Right, again, as I say, this is how not to bind a journal. Yeah, so be careful. If you're using something very, very thick, you know, you may struggle. If you're anything like me, you may struggle. You might not. You might not struggle at all, but... You might do. So this is probably the thickest thing I've ever used. Okay. And of course now this is going to be a really big bulky knot. So again, I should have really factored that in and have my knot on the outside. But, you know, we live and learn, don't we? So we know for next time, well actually we know for next time probably just do not use this particular baker's twine at all for binding a journal because it's, it's not great. Right, let me put that away. Okay, so there's our very basic journal. Again, let me just get my bulldog clips out of the way. Okay, pop them back up. Right, so that's our, our journal. I'm going to squash it down because, of course, it's got that great big, you know, knot in the middle. And I'm just going to take these middle pages in slightly because they're pretty, you know, they're quite long and overhanging a little bit much. I don't mind them overhanging a bit, to be honest, but these were overhanging quite a lot. And it's not really like I'm going to be putting loads of lace in this one or anything to, you know, tie it in. It's going to be pretty much plain, so there you go just a bit better like that okay 
Oops, no. Again, so you're probably better off trimming your pages before you put them in. Right, there we go. It's because I'm doing these videos back to back so that I've got them, um, you know, pretty quickly ready to upload for you guys. So uh, although these are going up individually for you, you know, for you, I have filmed this, I think, my third video now, literally with no break. So, um, yeah, I'm not expecting you to be feeling sorry for me or anything like that. I just am explaining why you're probably feeling quite fresh and up to this and I'm just like flagging quite a bit. So, um you know I'm yeah I'm not like stopping for a drink or anything well I'm having a sip of water but you know I'm not getting cups of tea or anything in between because I just really want to crack on so that I've got these videos you know whilst everyone's feeling unsure and you know worried and anxious and things like that that hopefully you know I'm possibly lonely if you're indoors and you know you maybe live alone and things I really just wanted to get these videos up as quick as possible. So, um, yeah, I'm not I'm not asking for sympathy or anything like that. I'm just meaning that's why I'm being so ugh, in my methods. It's because I've now done quite a bit of crafting, just one after another on the chop. Okay. So I'm thinking we just put this label here on the front, which looks quite pretty, doesn't it? So I'm just going to hold that down. Just pop a bit of hot glue on there. And then pop that one down there like that. And then we'll just take our label. Just pop that down like that in the centre. So super pretty there. Okay, and then opening up. So we could just pop a bit of lace. Just somewhere here. Doesn't matter really where. So again, just chopping ooh, chopping down a bit just pop a bit um, maybe up there I think so Oops, like that okay Okay, so that looks pretty, doesn't it? And then just going to do something similar at the back. Not so the back ties in with the front, you understand, but just so, you know, just so it's got something going on really on the back. So it's not looking, you know, just completely plain. So I'll just pop it this way up, I think, this time. Like that. Okay. So I hope that everybody's getting on well. I hope you're all, you know, keeping well, staying inside. Hopefully, you know, this project's hopefully taking up a little bit of your time and hopefully, you know, helping to lessen the anxiety a little bit, taking your mind off things. Okay. So that's our little journal, which I just think looks really super cute. So obviously we've got those little pockets on the inside. So whoops. So we'll just make a couple of little things to put in those, I think. So again, what I'm going to do, just having a quick look on my desk. I thought I had a little envelope here. Okay, so I've got a small envelope here. So I think I'm just going to decorate the little envelope up. I might decorate it up with this little row of the beach huts. I'm just going to cut them 
out of there first. And then just like we did on the last time when we used the other row, I'm just going to snip in going like the same direction against all of the roofs. Like that. And I'm not really meaning to sound really patronising doing this. All I'm saying it for is obviously, you know, like if when you download this digi kit, you think, oh gosh, look at how fiddly they're going to be to cut out. I'm just trying to give you an idea of, you know, something I find quite quick, you know, a little way that seems quite quick to me to cut out all of those roofs. Oh, and now I've said that, look, look what's happening. I've not gone far enough in. Um, yeah, so I'm not trying to be patronising or anything else when I'm saying, oh, cut them like this. I just mean, at first glance, you know, you might think, oh, no, that's just going to take ages. But actually, if you do them like this, they don't really take very long. You know, providing that you cut right into the, the V shape of the roofs, unlike like what I have done. There we go. Right. Get rid of those. So that's our little row of beach huts there. So they look cute, don't they? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take my little scripty stamp. And again, I think I used on the previous video the Toffee Crunch. And I'm just going to stamp got a little postage stamp mark just going to stamp that over there in the top corner might stamp another one maybe like here and then I'm just going to do a little bit of the script around just so it's not plain basically you know just so it's got some interest going on like that and then I'm just going to pop those little row of beach huts down the bottom they're really cute aren't they okie dokie okie dokie so we then pop those on like that. Again, just press them down with my dried out wipe. Like that. And then just going to take one of my little rows of the bunting. Oops. That one there. Now this one's slightly fiddly, fid, fiddlier because it's got the flowers in between the flags. Um, but again, you know, don't get too worried about them because, you know, again, as we always say, I mean, no one really knows what shape that flower was in the first place. So, you know, just as long as you vaguely have some sort of petally shape, it's fine. Don't get too worried you know if it's not looking quite as per the original flower <laughs> okay and then we just finish that okay so how cute is that so we're just going to pop those on actually I think I'm going to have it going that side instead okay there we go just pop that down like that and again just take my wipe and you know stick it down really well onto that envelope So 
looking really cute there. Let me just throw these little bits away. And clear up a little bit as I go. And then on the back of that envelope, I may just pop a little flower, I think. So again, just taking that little flower. Might just pop that onto that flap, which looks just so cute on there. I'm just going to hot glue that down because um, that's just really quick. There we go, just being really lazy there. Okay, and then do we want any lace on that envelope or anything? Are we going to have a lace free piece? Surely not. Let me just. Let me just see. Might be that this lace is too big, too bulky. Because the envelope's really quite pretty and delicate. Oh, that's quite cute, isn't it? Hanging off just at the edge. Let's just have it there. Okay, so that's quite nice. And then just take, obviously, a couple of the journal cards from the kit. You can just pop them then into your envelope. So let's take those two. Or perhaps, actually, I, perhaps I'll have a photograph and a, a journal card. So hang on, let me just rummage back through. Oh, it's all in such a mess now up here. Oh, we might just have to, um, <laughs> we might just have to have those, those photos because now I, of course, can't see the journaling cards anywhere. Oh, I've got that one, there we go. I don't know whether this might be a bit big for that envelope, actually. So I'll just snip it down as we go. Make it slightly smaller. There we go. So we've got a little photograph in there and a little journal card in there. How cute is that? Just so pretty, isn't it? And again, you know, you could just finish that off with a bit of a bit of bling. And just cut off those like fray type sections bits. There we go. So just pop that on there. Like that. So really, really cute. You can just pop that into one of your pockets. Again, I did not put any bling on the cover of here. So should we... Should we pop some bling on somewhere? Oh, let's just have that there. I know it's slightly weird, but I do always love to have a bit of bling, so. There we go. Just pop that on there, like that. And obviously we've got the back pocket still to go. Um, I'm going to have to call it quits there because my time is up for this morning. It's now my shift for the, the homeschooling. So, um, yeah, I hope that you're you're enjoying the series so far. I hope you've downloaded the papers and, um, you know, are managing to make some really pretty nice things. So stay safe and well, everybody, and I will catch you in the next video. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye.